Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Trent and today we're going to talk about everything you need to know about cataracts and cataract surgery. So let's begin. Before we talk about cataracts and cataract surgery, let's go over the eye anatomy. And I love analogy, so this will help make things very simple to understand. In the front of the eye, you have the cornea. It's very similar to the front glass lens in a camera lens. Inside the eye, you have your human crystalline lens. That's what becomes a cataract. It is similar to the deepest innermost glass lens in this lens right here. And of course, you also have the retina. That's your eye's sensor. Very similar to how a camera has a sensor right here. And lastly, you have the optic nerve. The optic nerve connects the eyeball to the brain, similar to how a USB cable connects the camera to a computer. Now that we talked about basic anatomy, let's talk about cataracts. Cataracts occur because that inner lens inside your eye turns slightly yellow and opaque with time. Cataracts are a common eye condition that affects millions of people, especially when they get older. Due to the yellowing and the clouding of that lens, your vision becomes more blurred, and in fact, a lot of people described a slight yellow filter in their vision. And most, if not all, patients always tell me that when they're driving at night, they see a lot of halos around headlights. And a common question I always get as an ophthalmologist, when should I get cataract surgery? Well, the answer is, it depends. As an eye surgeon, I get a couple measurements to help find that answer. With glasses, if you're having difficulty reading that 2040 line, you should probably consider cataract surgery. And that's because many states have a minimum requirement to be able to legally drive. In addition to that simple objective measurement, What's more important is what you're experiencing. It's not what I see that matters, it's what you can't see. So if you can't work, if you can't drive, or you can't do the hobbies that matter to you, you should probably consider cataract surgery. Now let's talk about what happens during the cataract surgery evaluation. Of course, we wanna see what your current vision is, so we will measure you for glasses just to see what your best corrected vision is in a pair of glasses. We will also get a couple other tests just to see if the blurred vision is due to the cataracts or some other cause like glaucoma or macular degeneration. So the test I like doing is called an OCT test. The OCT is a great way to look at the optic nerve and the retina. Remember, it's so we can look at that USB cable and that camera sensor. And of course, we'll get other tests called topography to look at that front glass lens and biometry to look at that lens inside the eye. How is cataract surgery performed? Cataract surgery is performed as an outpatient procedure, meaning you go home that same day. We try to make you as comfortable as possible, so we do put numbing eye drops inside the eye, and of course, we have an anesthesiologist to keep you calm and relaxed during the entire surgery. After ensuring that you're calm and relaxed, we then place an eyelid holder into the eye so I can get to the cataract. Then I make small incisions into the eye, I use an instrument to break up the cataract into small pieces and I remove the cataract. Next, we replace the cataract with an intraocular lens implant called an IOL to help restore your vision. Simple, right? Well, there's a little bit more to that, but let's talk about now the risk and benefits for cataract surgery. With cataract surgery, you can expect to see better. Not only do patients describe seeing things in more sharp and finer detail, a lot of people do say that colors pop again. And oftentimes with cataract surgery, if you wore thick glasses before cataract surgery, usually we can choose a lens implant that can help really minimize your need of glasses. Of course, there are risks with cataract surgery. Let's go over some of the more common issues and then move along and talk about the very severe complications that can occur with cataract surgery. Dry eyes. Dry eyes is very common after cataract surgery. Patients with dry eyes experience what's called a foreign body sensation, meaning they feel like there's dirt or sand in their eyes. Their eyes might be red or even slightly blurred. We usually take care of dry eyes with artificial tears, but some patients do require stronger medications. For a very detailed overview about dry eyes and how we take care of it, click this video right here. Droopy eyelids. Remember the eyelid holder that we talked about? Well, that eyelid holder can stretch the skin of the eyelid so that your eyelids may droop just a little bit. To address this, we can do an eyelid surgery to help lift the eyelid up. Glare. 
Sometimes after cataract surgery, patients can report glare. So when they look at headlights or lights at night, they'll notice a little bit of streaking or a little bit of rings around these lights. These are more common with certain types of lenses, such as the multifocal lens. Posterior capsular opacification. A posterior capsular opacification is when the capsule holding the lens implant becomes hazy with time. During cataract surgery, we remove the inner part of the cataract, but leave the outer capsule. That outer capsule is important because it holds the new intraocular lens implant. However, that capsule can become hazy with time. Patients with a posterior capsular opacification report a little bit of blurred vision and a lot of glare. The good news is we can address the hazy capsule by doing an in-office procedure called a YAG laser capsulotomy. That creates a round opening into the hazy capsule to restore your vision again. A posterior capsular opacification is common. It can occur in about 25% of patients who get cataract surgery. Recurrent inflammation. During the healing process of cataract surgery, we prescribe a variety of eye drops. One of them is a steroid. That steroid eye drop is supposed to address the inflammation. And most of the time, I have my patients on these drops for about one month. Sometimes patients with recurrent inflammation experience red eyes, eye pain, light sensitivity, and when I examine their eyes, there's still a little bit of inflammation. So in that case, instead of just using the eye drops for four weeks, we sometimes need it for about a total of two months. That can usually address the recurrent inflammation. Retained lens fragment. During cataract surgery, remember, I said we broke up the cataract into small pieces and we removed the entire cataract. However, small pieces of the cataract may remain in the eye. Of course, it's not intentional, but if there are what's called retained lens fragments, we can use medications to help that part dissolve, but sometimes you do have to go back into surgery to remove that teeny tiny piece out again. Patients with retained lens fragment can get a little bit of light sensitivity because they have a little bit of inflammation, and sometimes they may have slightly blurred vision as well. Floaters and retinal detachment. Floaters are very common in general. But oftentimes, patients may notice floaters a little bit more after cataract surgery. Usually, it's not a big deal, and the brain usually adapts to it. However, in very rare cases, patients can get what's called a retinal detachment. That's an eye emergency. So if you have flashes, floaters, or if you're having what's called a black curtain sensation where you can't see very well in the periphery, call your eye doctor immediately. This is an eye emergency. Endophthalmitis. The most serious complication of any eye surgery is endophthalmitis. Endophthalmitis is when you get an infection inside the eye. Patients with endophthalmitis have very blurred vision, significant eye pain, and their eyes tend to be very red. As an eye doctor, we try to minimize the chance of endophthalmitis by practicing sterile surgical technique. However, in rare cases, this can still occur. The management of endophthalmitis includes a combination of eye drops, injections of medications, and sometimes even surgery. Now that we've talked about cataract surgery, let's move to the fun part, which is talking about the lens implants available for you. But before we get to that point, let's go over a couple critical visual concepts. The first is accommodation. When you were young, you had the ability to look at something far away and up close. But you might have noticed that not everything was in focus at the same time. Let me show you what that's like. Look at the cell phone right here. When you're looking at the cell phone, the background is blurry, but your phone is sharp. But when you change your gaze to look at the background, you will notice that your phone is blurry. The reason why that's occurring because inside your eye, you have eye muscles that can change the shape of that lens. When you're young, that lens is very flexible. The process of changing the lens shape and size is called accommodation. When your eye muscles are relaxed, your lens takes its more natural oval shape. This allows you to see things far away pretty clearly. However, when your eye muscles contract, the lens takes a very round shape. This increases the power of that lens and allows you to see things that are up close. This brings up the next important visual concept, visual zones. We as ophthalmologists like dividing visual zones into three distinct areas. Number one is distance. Distance vision is for things that are far away. 
You use your distance vision when you're doing things like watching TV, driving, looking at road signs. The next zone is the intermediate zone. That's like for something two to four feet away basically at an arm's length. That's for things like using your computer or when you're driving, looking at your speedometer. The third visual zone is the near vision. That's for things that are up close. So when you're reading a book, reading your prescription bottles, or again, that phone, you're using your near vision. As ophthalmologists, we often talk about targeting these visual zones. So targeting either distance, intermediate, or near. What we mean by that is we're picking a lens that will allow you to see best in that visual zone. Does that mean you'll be able to see in that visual zone without glasses? Well, the answer is, it depends. There are other factors that affect whether or not you need glasses, and one of them is astigmatism. And so, that brings us up to the third visual concept, astigmatism. Astigmatism means that your eyeball isn't round like a soccer ball, but more shaped like a football. There are two factors contributing to astigmatism the corneal astigmatism, which is the front glass lens, and the lenticular astigmatism, which is the inner glass lens. For the purposes of cataract surgery, all I want you to remember for astigmatism is that on one side, it's deeper than the other side, and that can affect how the light is bent towards your eye. Now that we've gone over those three fundamental visual concepts, Let's now move into the lenses. There are several types of lenses out there. The first is the standard monofocal lens. The monofocal lens is great at getting one visual zone into focus. That's why it's called a monofocal. That means you'll need glasses to see the other visual zones. Most of my patients prefer to see far away as clear as possible, so they'll ask me to choose a lens to target the distance visual zone. So that means for things like reading a book, Using your computer, you'll need glasses to see those areas well. And sometimes patients ask me to do the opposite, where they ask me to target the near visual zone. And in that case, you'll wear glasses to do things like drive or read road signs. There are pros for this monofocal lens. The first, it's the most cost-effective lens. And the second, it has the least amount of glare compared to the other types of lenses. However, there are some cons with this lens. If you're trying to be glasses free, this is not the option for you. You will need glasses to see the other visual zones. Now let's talk about multifocal and extended depth of focus lenses. There are two popular types of lenses that allow you to see in multiple visual zones at once. The first is the multifocal lens. The multifocal lenses produces multiple focal points. That means it allows you to see in multiple visual zones. With many of these multifocal lenses, you can see both at distance, intermediate, and near. Pros, this lens implant can really reduce your need of glasses. For that reason, the satisfaction rate is about 95 to 99%. But it's not perfect, there are some cons. Some people may notice glares and halos with this type of lens implant. And there still might be a decreased contrast sensitivity. And lastly, not everyone is a suitable candidate for this lens implant. If you have bad diabetic retinopathy, macular degeneration, or glaucoma, I typically do not recommend this lens implant for you. The other type of lens implant that's great for multiple visual zones is called the extended depth of focus lens. This is a newer type of lens implant that gives you an elongated focus of vision. Unlike a multifocal lens implant, which creates multiple focal points, an EDOF lens creates one single continuous focal point. The pros of this type of lens is it can reduce your need of glasses to see in multiple visual zones. As a rough rule of thumb, the EDOF lenses are really good at distance and intermediate. And this lens implant may be an option for patients with early to mild macular degeneration and glaucoma. Eye conditions that would not have been suitable for the multifocal lens implant. The cons of this lens is that it doesn't give you as good near vision as a multifocal lens implant. With certain types of EDOF lenses, you can get a reduced contrast sensitivity. Now let's talk about toric lenses. Toric lenses address astigmatism. Remember, if you have astigmatism, one axis of the eye 
bends light more than the other axis. And as we mentioned earlier, there are two parts contributing to astigmatism. The corneal astigmatism, which is the front of the eye, and the lenticular astigmatism. And during cataract surgery, since we remove your eye's natural lens, mathematically, the only part contributing to astigmatism left after cataract surgery is really all coming from the cornea. And so during cataract surgery, there's two ways we can address astigmatism. Number one, we can make incisions into the cornea to reduce some of the astigmatism. The larger the amount of astigmatism, the larger the incision we need to make in the cornea. The second is we can insert a special type of lens called that toric lens to replace your eye's natural lens. The larger the amount of astigmatism, the larger the power of that toric lens will be. All the previous lenses that we talked about, the monofocal, the multifocal, the extended depth of focus lens, all have a toric option. So that means you can get a monofocal toric lens, a multifocal toric lens, and an extended depth of focus toric lens. To decide whether or between I like doing number one, making an incision to the cornea, or option number two, doing a toric lens, I usually look at the amount of astigmatism that a patient has. If it's small amounts, I prefer making the corneal incision, but for larger amounts of astigmatism, I do prefer the toric lens implant. The reason being, for corneal incisions, the bigger the astigmatism, the bigger the incision. So for really large amounts of astigmatism, I have to make such big cuts that I really don't recommend it. Now let's talk about light adjustable lenses. There's a new type of lens implant that allows you to adjust the power of the lens after cataract surgery. And we do so by using an in-office laser performed after cataract surgery. The cool part is you can also address small amounts of astigmatism as well. Oftentimes, eye surgeons will do multiple adjustments to fine tune and see what visual zone or what power patients prefer most before locking it in. The pros of this lens type is that you can adjust the power of the lens a few times before locking things in. That gives you a really good trial period. The cons of this lens implant though is that due to the cost of the equipment used to adjust the power of the lens implant, it may be the most expensive. In addition, it does require the most visits to the doctor's office because you have to do that to adjust the power. Now let's talk about femtosecond laser. With routine cataract surgery, we're using instruments to do every step, including making the round opening into the lens implant, using the entire instrument to break up the cataract into small pieces, and of course, for patients that are trying to correct astigmatism, we use instruments to make our corneal incisions. With femto cataract surgery, a computer is helping us do some of these critical steps. That means the opening lens is centered. So when we do the multifocal lens or the torque lens, I hit the sweet spot of the that lens a little bit easier. In addition, by softening the lens, it helps make the step to remove the cataract a little bit easier during cataract surgery. And most importantly, with that laser, we can create precise incisions into the cornea to address small amounts of astigmatism. Now for the critical post-op period. I always have a few restrictions and rules for my patients. Number one, wear that eye shield. The eye shield that we give you at the surgery center, please wear that at night for the first week after cataract surgery. You might accidentally rub your eyes and that eye shield will help prevent you from doing that. Number two, avoid eye rubbing. Eye rubbing can cause a lot of damage to your eye. Number three, avoid getting water into your eyes. That means when you bathe, make every effort to prevent soapy water from hitting your eyes. Number four, minimize physical activity. As a rough rule of thumb, I tell patients no more than 10 to 15 pounds. If you have to hold your breath to lift something, it's probably too heavy. Also, don't bend at the waist. Keep your head above your heart at all times. And of course, the most critical thing is to follow the post-op eye drop instructions. During each visit, we're checking to make sure the eye is healing properly. So we might be adjusting the steroid, the non-steroidal eye drops, or even the antibiotics. So follow the instructions to the T. Now for a few commonly asked questions. Number one, can I use my eyesight right away after cataract surgery? The answer is, of course. You can read as much as you want. You can watch as much Netflix or television. There is no limitation to that. However, you might notice that for the first few days, your vision's blurred, and that's to be expected. Number two, when can I expect to see again? Well, the answer is depends. 
Most patients of routine cataract surgery can't expect the first few days to be blurred. There are some patients who see 2020 right away. That's the exception, not the rule. And I also get asked, can I go back to work right away? And the answer to that is also, it depends. It depends on your type of work. If you do a lot of desk work, of course you can return within a few days, but if you do a little bit of heavy lifting, remember that 10 to 15 pounds, you need to be off heavy weights for about two to three weeks. And the one last thing I wanna leave you guys with is when to call us right away. Remember, blurred vision, eye pain, and irritation is common after cataract surgery. However, if you're having flashes or floaters, severe headaches with nausea and vomiting, call us right away because you could be having signs of a retinal detachment or even high eye pressures. The only way to know is to be examined by your eye surgeon. Anyways, I hope you found that overview of cataracts and cataract surgery to be very helpful. Don't forget as always, your eyes tell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <music>